that off the screen. All right. Well, good started. Looks like a small group tonight, but that's okay. Um, that's what we could that we'll do whatever we need to do. So if you haven't met me before, I'm Kelly. I'm the plant-based kitchenista. So welcome. You might have seen me on Chef AJ's channel, which is always a great place to be. So love Chef AJ. Um, we're actually I'm doing a pre-recording and stuff for this next class because she's got a couple of events and stuff that she needs to go to. So I'm doing a pre-recording with her on Sunday. So that'll be fun. We always enjoy talking to Chef AJ. She always always got some kind of crazy jokes and all those kind of things, which we we love. So I, we're actually going to be making so pasta a la norma today, and then we're going to be making a winter pear salad. Um, I know it's not really winter. It's kind of more coming into the spring, but it's, you know, it's like one of those salads and stuff when you get like roasted, like, um, like fruit. So like, we're going to use pears on this one, but if you use like apples and stuff, and when you roast fruit, it's really good. And I don't care if it's, you know, winter, summer, fall, doesn't matter. It's always good. And a salad is always good. So we're going to be doing that. The pasta is going to be the one I'm going to make is spicy, but you, but we'll talk through it. You don't have to make it spicy if you don't like spicy. So I'll kind of give you some kind of hints, tips, and tricks all the way through. That's just who I am. So before we actually kind of go into starting the recipes, I'm going to have Jerry come up here and introduce himself. He's the man behind the camera and the man behind the food, eating the food, not making the food. I eat the food. I'm good at that. Hi, I'm Jerry Casados. So for those first timers not met me, I'm a plant based nutritionist. I have a private practice here in Colorado, and uh, we've been plant based now 16 years. So I did it for health reasons of my own. Heart disease was developing. I was on three blood pressure meds, cholesterol meds, all the typical stuff when you get older. And <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I reversed it and went to see McDougal, Dr. John McDougal. Now I teach his program. So I'm a certified instructor for Don, Dr. John McDougall's uh, Start Solution program. So any questions about nutrition, be glad to answer. And uh, we've got the information I put out there about our websites and YouTube channels and all that. I'll post it again. But uh, anyway, I'm just here to eat food and answer questions. So enjoy. I think it's more, I think it's probably more eating food first. He's always excited on Thursdays and stuff when I do the classes. He's like, oh, new food. And then he then the next day, of course, runs to the like 1030, 1045, starts running into the refrigerator to hide the things and stuff so he could have it for lunch the next day, too, which will probably happen tomorrow again. But we all know how he is. That's OK. All right. So the, the thing that I'm going to show you a little bit on the, the, the pasta. So one of the things that we do is it's going to be eggplant. So you're using a roast. So both kind of recipes use roasted, which is really nice because you can actually use, you know, the same the same kind of temperature in the oven. So one of them says 425 and I think the other one says 375. So you could actually put it somewhere in the middle at four when you're roasting the vegetables and then just, you know, kind of watch them and one will go faster than the other. But that's OK. So you don't have to readjust your your. Um, oven. I had to think of what it was called. I was saying furnace. And I was like, no, I know that's not right. So I have already did, I already did some of the eggplant. Um, this was a large, so this is not like a large, but probably an eggplant about this big already. And I just, you know, the, the skin and stuff, some people don't like the skin because it can be tough. When you roast it, it's not as bad. So if you, if you just do a stripe on it, so you're just taking a peeler and you're just taking off half the skin, um, then it doesn't, it's not as chewy when you're doing it. But this, like I said, was a was a medium sized eggplant. Look how much I got with being roasted. Not much. So I've got another batch in the oven. So this one says two. But sometimes it's one of those things when it says when you say well, like two large ones or two medium ones, you're like, is that too much? Am I not going to like that much eggplant? But when it comes down to that amount, add some more. That's what I'm going to do. So I've got it in the oven. So I'll pull it out here. And you'll see the difference because it's so this is fully roasted. And this one's in mid process. So see the, the difference in the sizes already and eggplants that way. It's a lot of water that's in eggplant. So you'll end up seeing the eggplant shrink down quite a bit. So you could leave it at this size if you want. So if you want it softer within your pasta, you could. I like it where it's a little bit more chewy and you've got the really nice roasted flavor. So I'm going to roast it some more, but it's at that point now. So I just scrape it up. All it has is vegetable broth on it and pepper. I didn't put any salt because Jerry's not a salt person. So 
If you want salt, just, you know, you could put salt on it when you're making it, or you can just put salt on the table and add it to the pasta sauce afterwards. So I'm just gonna kind of spread it out a little bit. Then the other secondary roasted vegetable, mushrooms. So let's say you're not a mushroom fan, you're not an eggplant fan, which could happen. That, that definitely could happen. Let me just get the mushrooms out of here. And all I did was slice the mushrooms. So this is eight ounces of just button mushrooms. You know, you can use, you could use um, portobello, you could use whatever you want. Mushrooms, same thing, lots of water. So they're gonna shrink in size too, but nothing better than having roasted vegetables. So if you don't like eggplant, substitution. Let me just get that in there. If you don't like eggplant substitution, you could be, you could use like zucchini, you could use the yellow squash. So it kind of gives you that same type of, of chewiness with it, but you don't have the eggplant. Cause I know some people don't like the consistency of eggplant. And that's why I would say, if you don't like the consistency, roast it down to where it's little pieces like this. And then you don't get that, I guess some people would say it's mushy. So like when you bite into something, you feel like the mush, this actually takes all the water out of it. And it's just like tofu and things that it gives you a really nice roasted flavor. So that would be the replacement. So I would do zucchini um, and it's gonna shrink down a lot or the yellow, the yellow squash or both together to replace your eggplant. If you don't like the mushrooms, usually I say go with eggplant, but if you don't like the mushrooms, just leave those out and then start thinking about other vegetables that you could put in it. Like springtime right now, there's so many things out there. So you could do, you know, you could do your um, like cauliflower, you could do broccoli, you could do um, roasted red peppers or the sweet mini peppers. There's so many things that you could add to it or skip all that and add the onions into it. So like roasted, like our caramelized onions or even that roasted in the oven, nothing better. I love onions when you go into like a pasta sauce. So those are some of the substitutions that you could, that you definitely could make with that. Um, you could also with eggplant, I just thought about that, you could do tofu. So if you don't like the eggplant, then go ahead and chop up tofu in little bite-sized chunks and roast that in the oven. So same thing, just put it in the oven, the same temperature, put the, the vegetable broth on it, some um, pepper, black pepper on it, and then just roast it to where the moisture comes out. And then you could get the same thing, but not have eggplant. So. There's some of your substitutions that you can use. So we gonna, we're gonna let that roast for a little bit. Pasta sauce or marinara. Diced tomatoes. And you want as much liquid as you can. It's been soaking for quite, it's been in the, the dish. So I just kind of just keep draining it a little bit. So these are just regular diced tomatoes, cooners. Um, there's no salt. So we just always do the no salt. If you wanted to switch it up a little bit more, use the fire roasted tomatoes. Those are fun. If you're actually doing a like a marinara sauce and you want to have it just a little bit different, Jerry's traditional, then fire roasted is really fun. So I'm just going to dump those in, get those going. And if you don't like chunk, because that is true for a lot of things, if you don't like chunky things, then just take, like you could put those in a, a food processor and grind them up if you wanted to, or you could actually just take a fork to them and then just kind of add that in there. So that's a way to get the chunk out. I like the chunk, a little bit of chunk, and then the, the actual marinara. It just kind of feels like it's not, like just kind of draining all over the noodles. It gives you that, like that binding to the noodles, which is really good. Then you've got three cans of tomato sauce. So this brand is Contanina. It is a tomato sauce that's really good. So Contanina. And you could get, you know, there's all kinds of things that you do. When I usually, usually when I do something like this and there's still tomato sauce in it, I do just a little bit of water, roll it around in there just to get the last of the tomato sauce out. So three cans. This freezes, because I know that's probably gonna be one of the questions. This freezes really, really well too. So if you make up a bunch of the marinara sauce and you use maybe, um, I don't know, a couple cups and you've got a couple cups left over, just put it into, like little baggies and put them in the freezer and then away you go. Then you just bring it out the next time that you wanna do some pasta or you decide that maybe I just want a bunch of vegetables with pasta. That's a really good thing to do. Or I want a pasta kind of like a marinara sauce to dip my uh, polenta fries in, my baked polenta fries. That's another way to do it too. A Little bit extra tomato sauce there. So just kind of get that out. All right, and messy. Just give it a quick stir. 
and I'll show it after it's all kind of put together. Then basil. Basil is one of those things that once you, so let's just say that, so like a lot of times and stuff, I'll buy the, the big tubs of basil that's fresh. Um, once you get it done and you're making like a lasagna, because we made a lasagna over the weekend um, for Easter, but once you've got the lasagna done, and you've got, let's just say you've got a package like this left over, just take it, put it in a baggie and put it in the freezer. So the next time you're getting ready to make like a tomato sauce, you just grab the baggie out and you can just kind of crunch it up with your fingers or just pull it out, put it in here and you've got fresh basil. So never, never put it to waste. Or if you put it back in the fridge, what's gonna happen of course, is it gets moldy, it goes away, so freeze it. So when I do basil, put as much or as little as you like, Jerry likes, likes a lot. It's not all about him, but you know, we're in a cooking class. So I'm just gonna strip, I strip the leaves off like that. Take your stems. And then when you have some of the big leaves like this, just kind of line them all up. That's even a bigger leaf. Roll it up, almost like you're rolling up like tobacco or something, which bad for you, but it's a good example. And then I'm gonna do a chiffonade cut, which is just basically small little, little cuts like this, all the way up the basil. And then if it's too big, you don't want that big of a strip, just go right down the middle. Then you have all these nice like ribbons, and that's gonna go in the sauce. So that was a full packet. You don't have to do a full packet. We just really like basil, so that's what we do. Stir that in, still have some on the board. Okay, and then you've got garlic powder. So you've got a teaspoon of the garlic powder. And I actually put this in last night, so sometimes in the refrigerator, sticks to my glass dishes. And you could use a regular garlic powder, you could use a roasted garlic powder. I have a roasted one, which is really good. So it gives you that extra kind of almost like a smoky flavor. And then I've got three cloves of garlic, minced. Get that out of the way. Give it a quick stir. And then after that, it's done basically, but we're gonna let it simmer. Because the more you let it simmer, especially a marinara sauce, there's some that we have friends and stuff that used to make spaghetti and they would make it like 48 hours in advance and just let it sit there and simmer really, really low. And it always made the best sauce. So the longer you let it simmer, the better it is. So let me show you. Over there. So it doesn't look like much, but it's really, really good. You can already smell it. I can smell the basil and the garlic and everything else. So once it keeps simmering, it's gonna be great. It smells wonderful. It's one of those things that if you had like bread, just dip some bread in it. All right, so we'll kind of watch that. Let it simmer. I'll put that on a medium low so it doesn't start popping up. All right, so I've got everything's in there looking good. So let me get the, the water going for the pasta. The other thing that I'm gonna make is the ricotta. So I noticed on my recipe, and sorry about that, I'll apologize ahead of time. I missed a step to tell you about the ricotta. So it's all the ingredients are on here. So you've got, you've got silk and tofu, drained. You've got firm tofu, extra firm, firm. I always like to use those. You have lemon juice. You have and I kind of put it together, but didn't realize so I've got basil here on the bottom. So dried basil, and then I've got nutritional yeast are the main things that are going to go in there. So you're going to put that into a food processor or blender, whichever you want to do. So I'll go ahead and add the silken tofu. And I'll show you what I do for silken tofu. Let me grab one. I should have grabbed it out to show you. This is really nice because it's shelf safe, which I love. So instead of using all my refrigerator space, because I don't think we ever have enough refrigerator space, I buy this and you can get, you can get it on Amazon, pretty much natural grocers, any of those stores. So it's Mori New Silken Tofu. 
and I bought the one extra firm. This is my favorite. These are about a dollar. They used to be a dollar ninety nine. I think they're like two twenty nine now for one of the boxes. And all you do is just you know when you cut off the ends, you just drain. There's a little bit, probably about a tablespoon of of liquid in it, so you just drain that out. And then that is your silken tofu. So you can keep these in the the um, pantry and not use all your refrigerator space, which I like. Because I noticed that these also last two times longer than the ones that you buy that are in the refrigerator space. So Mori new, really good, different types, really like silky up to like extra firm, I think is that I always get the extra firm just because I, I like it that way. All right, then I've got, I got my block of firm tofu. So I'm just going to crumble that up. Then I have my lemon juice. And one thing I always talk about with nutritional yeast is when it says something, if I, you know, if I'm trying a recipe and I'm like, oh, I just, that looks good. I think I'll try that as a recipe. Um, when I do nutritional yeast, they'll say something like a quarter cup or an eighth of a cup. Um, and nutritional yeast is what gives you that cheese flavor. And it also turns your, um, your ricotta and stuff to a, like a nice kind of a yellow color. So when I do the nutritional yeast in a lasagna, people don't know. They don't know it's tofu. They don't know it's nutritional yeast and all that. They just eat it. We've had many times, like we, we took it to um, a party one time and a cardiologist was giving us a hard time. And, um, and then I brought out the lasagna because that was something it was like, you know, we didn't want to do the hamburgers and stuff. So Jerry and I had the, this huge lasagna and he took, I was like a, like a slice, probably about, I don't know, it was huge. He was eating, he's like, this is the best lasagna ever. And I was like, well, it is plant-based. It is tofu ricotta. And he kind of looked at me and he's like, well, hmm, you convinced me it was good. So that was nice. Um, but when like going back to nutritional yeast, I usually will double nutritional yeast. So if they say a quarter cup, I will go start out in your, you know, your, your uh, palate, your taste palate. But with me, I go to like a half a cup to sometimes a three quarter cup. And the reason why is because the more you add, the more cheesier it gets. And when it mixes in with things, it's just really good. This is also really good on popcorn. So if you pop popcorn, if you do some nutritional yeast, just sprinkle it on top and then a little bit of salt and pepper, really good. So I'm just gonna add that in, just sprinkle that around. That's the three quarter cup that I, that I sit on there. But a lot of times you'll see recipes that'll say quarter cup for ricotta. To me, it's not cheesy enough or it doesn't, like it doesn't blend in enough. So that one's, that's why I've upped it up to three quarters. All right, it is healthy, it's good for you. So let me put that on there here. Mix that up. Whole thing's shaking. To be a, like a good head head massage if you're had a headache. Just wanted to get it mixed up enough. Scrape down a little bit of your nutritional yeast or if the tofu kind of popped up. So there's your ricotta. And when you smell it, when you make it, and I highly advise making it at home because this is really good. Mixing this with the marinara sauce and then doing your baked polenta fries or breads or adding this to some bread with marinara sauce, good. So you can freeze this. It's one of those things that when you freeze it, when you bring it out and you let it thaw, you're gonna wanna put it back into the food processor. So it gets, cause otherwise it gets more of a, cause the tofu will sometimes get a little crumbly on it. So you just wanna, you just wanna make sure you put it back into your food processor and, and um, you know, grind it back up. And then that way, what'll end up happening is it'll come up like nice and smooth like that. So that's all ready to go. Usually when I make a lasagna, I'll make two and I'll like almost double the ricotta. So this is ready, but just why I, nothing was flipping. I always show this, that when you're doing a food processor, there's the, the hole right here where your blade goes. If you just put your finger in there and just kind of hold the side, it actually holds the blade in so it doesn't tip. 
So it's not like one of those things where you see on the TV where something plops and something spills all over you. So I'm going to set that to the side because we don't need that right now. Let me check the vegetables. Looking good. So you can see the liquid already. So the tofu is, or that the tofu, the, the um, eggplant's really, really close. And then I will probably give the mushrooms here just a few more minutes. I don't want to get them where they're so dry. I want them to have some moisture, but that's looking really, really good. So probably like a couple more minutes. All right, and then we're gonna do pasta. So I'm just using the Berea Barilla pasta. So this is Mezzi Rigatoni, but you know, you don't have to, if you're not a fan, we probably, I would say in this family, we're probably more spaghetti. We like spaghetti, linguine, um, those type of things, but it's fun to have something that's a little bit different. And I probably have seven or eight different styles of the pasta and stuff that's, you know, cause I'll do like a pasta salad or I'll put it in soup. So um, I did have the rigatoni. So this one is 16 ounces. We do like pasta. So I'm gonna probably do, I said on the on here eight ounces, which is half, but I'm actually gonna do about three quarters. Yeah, it's all whole wheat. Yeah, all good for you, all those good things. So let me just whole grain. If you're gluten free, then there's the lentil, there's corn, there's all kinds of uh, different pastas that you can get that are really good. They have, I would say probably eight years ago, maybe they, maybe five years ago, the, the, the gluten-free pastas, not good. Um, now they are so good. There's so many different ones that they make. We've even had an artichoke one that was, that was, um, that was wonderful. We did that with a, I think we did a um, Asian salad, but it was an artichoke because I thought, what the heck? Um, but the, the red lentil, chickpea, all those are really, really good. I have quite a few different ones. The one I like, let me just grab it from the pantry. This one's fun. So I have, so I have a bonza. So um, shells made from chickpeas. So that's one of them. That one's always fun, especially if you're going to do something that you want just a little bit of pasta and lots of big chunks of vegetables, especially roasted vegetables. That one's good. And then this one is red lentil. This one's my favorite because it's so pretty when you make it up. Um, like if you looked at the back of this, it's got basil and things like that on it, but it's pretty and it actually holds up really well. I remember back when I first started cooking these, you would actually cook them and it'd be great. And then you would, you know, you'd rinse them all off. And the next thing you know, they're just like mush. They'd all mush together. These two brands hold up really well. So that's why I always keep them around. So I just put the pasta in. So we'll get that going. All right, so this has been simmering. So this is good because we're gonna be putting the vegetables in there. So the, the eggplant and the mushrooms here in just a few minutes. And then we're gonna add, so we're gonna add the ricotta and then we're gonna add red pepper flakes. So this is what I was talking about for heat. Um, if I go, if I love heat on spaghetti, any type of spaghetti, so when we go and go to different restaurants now, we've got a couple of them here in Colorado that they, they don't cook with oil because um, it's a vegan, it's a vegan Italian chef in one of the, the, rest, or the restaurants we go to. But we always ask for red pepper flakes because I love to put red pe pepper flakes on it and give that extra spice. So that's one of my favorites. So adding this in here, this might not even be enough. So I actually put some on the table, red pepper flakes. Then we're going to add oregano. So when we add the oregano, I'm actually going to crunch it between my fingers so I can open up. This is really fresh because we get it from savory spice, but it just adds that extra flavor. So it gives it a little bit of that, as I would say, like umami type of flavor. All right. And then we'll start adding everything else in. And then we're going to let that simmer because the more you let eggplant, mushrooms, tomato sauces simmer, the better off it is. So this could be something that you could make the day before. Let it set, you know, let it cool, set it in the fridge and then bring it back out and let it simmer for maybe an hour or two before people like guests come over and then it's ready to go. So, so let me check the vegetables and then we'll make the salad. Those look really good. All right, I wanna get the, so I have pears.
So the pears, I, I sliced them up a little bit earlier. Um, they're really good right now because a lot of times and stuff, when you go buy pears, they're like hard as a rock. These are super sweet. So Jerry did a very good job. Super sweet and very soft, which is really nice. So what we're going to do is I actually drizzled it just with a little bit of lemon juice to just keep the color. So I'm just going to pour that out. So I've got the apple. So let me grab my all my ingredients. And I need extra space. You know, have you ever found that in kitchens you never have enough space? Very true. And put that over there. We'll just trade places. All right, so I'm gonna add the apple cider vinegar as I didn't trade places. So I've got apple cider vinegar. Pour that over the pears, got that going. And then I'm gonna add them to a baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper. A lot of people will ask me, why do you use all the parchment paper? I love parchment paper on there because it keeps things from burning, but it also is the easiest cleanup ever. So just put those on there like that. I left skin on. Some people might take the skin off. I didn't. Like I said, it was this one of the sweetest pears that I, I tried the piece of it, and it was great. Um, you could leave it. So on the recipe, you could actually just half it. You have to core out a little bit of the middle, and you could do the halves, and you could do multiple halves of pears if you wanted to, and then you could slice them up afterwards. I figured because it's easier for them to roast, I went ahead and made them slices. But like I said, you just have to pull a little bit of the core out. So I'm going to put this in the oven. And watch those for a few minutes. So I'll show you what the vegetables look like. Mushrooms on the bottom, eggplant on the top. So if you think about this, all this put together, Lots of really good vegetables that are going to go into the sauce, which I'm going to add now. I'll do the first bunch, then I'll bring that one over. So eggplant. This is the one I roasted earlier. Then I was like, you know, doesn't look like enough eggplant. So I went and did some more. Okay. And if you're following along on the recipe, we're actually, so we are, we've roasted that. We've got the pasta. We've got the pasta cooking on step five. So I've got the eggplant, so we're on step six. So when the eggplant so is done, we're putting it into the sauce. I'm gonna add the rest here. And this is gonna be a really chunky sauce, which is really good. So one of the things that you wanna do, is because usually when you're, when you're doing your pasta and you're rinsing it off, you let go of all the, the pasta water. You wanna keep a little bit of it because that's what you're gonna add in here to if you want the sauce to be a little less thick. So if you're a preference where you like the sauce on the thin side, then you're gonna add the pasta water to do that. So here goes. This is the other reason why I like parchment paper. And if it sticks, just pull it off. And the nice thing about it is my pan, it's soft, but a little bit of, you know, a little bit of the moisture and stuff, but. Soap and water, swish it off, and you're ready to go. But you're not sitting there scrubbing it down, which is really nice. Let me throw that away, get the paper away. And I'll show you the sauce. Oh, yummy. All right, let's make sure I've got everything. So I've got, so we've got, we're six, so we've got that. We've got the, so I've got red. So I've got fresh basil in here. I'll just add some more to the top because I added a whole pack of basil. Now I'm going to add the red pepper flakes. And then I'm going to do the oregano. So be careful on your oregano because oregano is one of those, one of those uh, flavors and stuff that will take over your dish. So go low. What I always talk about, if you're new to my courses and my classes, that you're that always go low on your spices. Because what a lot of times and stuff you'll see is a lot of recipes that are out there, they overspice things and you'll end up tasting it. And you're like, oh, it's too much. And you'll throw it away. And that's what I don't want you to do. So start even low. So if I say like a half of a teaspoon, start with like an eighth or a quarter and then taste it. And then if you like it and you want more, add more. Because you can always add more, but you can't take away. So let me do a quick taste. It's 
really good. A little little kick. So I'm just gonna add the last. Because sometimes, like I said, even at savory spice, you'll get you'll get the oregano, and then it'll be just a little much, a little overpowering. That's perfect. All right, ready to show. Look how chunky that is. Isn't that beautiful? That looks really good. I will be pulling the mushrooms out and putting them on Jerry's plate because I'm not a mushroom fan unless it's ground up, but I left them big. So I'll be able to see the mushrooms that are in there. But talk about like a thick pasta sauce with, with chunks of mushrooms and, and uh, eggplant. Yum. So I'm just gonna let this simmer. All right, so we've got everything in there. So I've got, let's check the pasta. Check one. Couple more minutes. A little, a little too al dente. The other thing that we're gonna add, a little too chewy. The other thing we're gonna add is we're gonna add the ricotta. So it says you wanna add about, you know, a half to three quarters of the ricotta that you have, but I'm gonna play with it a little bit because I think it really depends if you like it. So if you more like you have a flavor for like the vodka sauces that were out there and they're real creamy, but they're really light and it's not so tomato-y because some people are like, yeah, I'm kind of tired of the tomato sauce. Use a lot of the ricotta because then it'll, it'll actually take the, the tomato, kind of the acid of the tomato and stuff way down and it'll give you that more like the vodka sauces, the real creamy type sauces. If you like it more where tomato-y, then go less on your ricotta. So I'm just gonna play with it a little bit, but I'm also gonna make sure I leave, and there'll be enough um, ricotta here for for decoration on top, just adding a little bit that you can mix in. So that was probably three quarters of a cup. See what that does. Like I said, if I made too much, I can always freeze it. And just three quarters of, I got the, the tomato pops today, keep spilling it. This three quarters of a cup and stuff just mixed in and I mixed it in here just a second. Actually already turned it to where it looks more like a vodka sauce. So let's see. That's really good. That, like just polenta fries, dipping some bread in it, putting a little, put a little bit of balsamic vinegar on the side. Good. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more since I have some. Stir that in and then I will show you. This also could be used in lasagna. Let's just say you're making a spinach lasagna, but you wanna add even more than just spinach. You could use this, this, this actual uh, marinara sauce and the ricotta and put it in between the layers and then put the spinach and things like that. Talk about different, but good. Really good. Okay, let's put this to the side. See already, it looks like a vodka sauce. All light, but really good. Really, really good. This is a really, really good flavor. But still, still thick, still chunky. Okay, letting that simmer a little bit. Check the pasta so I don't overcook it. One more minute. My, my um, pears and stuff, they're just sizzling right now. So hopefully they'll be, they'll be ready here in just a few. So I'm gonna watch those, but let me get the rest of the salad ready. Let that simmer. And like I said, if the sauce is too thick, like if you're like looking at this and going, too thick. But once I mix in the pasta, that's when I'll check it. Keep, keep some of your water, your pasta water and stuff off to the side. And that way you can just add, you know, a little tablespoon at a time and then add some liquid to it and make it a little bit less thick. So, but don't add too much because then it'll end up being runny, which you don't want. All right, so salad, while we're waiting for the pears and the pasta. So romaine lettuce, red leaf lettuce. I added more lettuce in here. Um, the reason why is because we really like salads and 
I'll, I'll um, mix this all up, but Jerry will eat probably the rest of it tomorrow for lunch. So we have plenty. So I'll kind of set that off to the side. Well, no, I'll do that. Put it there. Let me get the dressing. This is another really good dressing. I do have a dressing um, that is that we always call the crack dressing, which is more of a balsamic dressing that I make a lot. Um, and it has it has like flax seeds and balsamic vinegar and gray poupon. Sometimes I put yellow mustard in it. If you guys ever want that recipe, there's no oil or anything, but it's really, really good. And you can keep it. I've kept it in the uh, um, the jars. So jars like. So mason jars like this, or you can do the bigger ones. And then I always do the plastic lids. So I've actually quit using the metal lids because the metal lids will oxidize around the sides and it will turn your dressing to a really funny flavor. So if you use the plastic, you don't have to worry about them. I've kept the, the dressing, I've kept quite a few dressings and stuff like this in the fridge for three to four months. So it's kind of a nice way to keep dressing so you could end up making like say three or four dressings. And you're like, I feel like maybe a little Asian flair today, or I feel like more like a, a balsamic, or I feel more like a mustard dressing. There's all types of different ones that you could make. All right, let's check the pasta before I, because I think it's ready. It's perfect. Okay. Move this to the side. Let stand for just about a minute. All right, so the dressing, we've got half a cup of vegetable broth. If you don't have vegetable broth, water works just as well. Vegetable broth just gives that extra little flavor because you have all the vegetables that are roasted in there. What I did too, because it has raw cane sugar and agave, I took out the raw cane sugar this time and you don't really need it. So I would say, skip it. If you got your recipe, mark through it and just use your agave. So I have my agave here. That'll be my little bit of my thickener. Right, and then we've got the shallot. So just a small shallot, you can make it as small, like as minced as you want, or you can make it as large as you want. So if you want just slices and you don't wanna use the red, the red onion, you can do that too. Shallot's just a nice flavor of an onion without having it so overpowering. That's what they say, but I'll be truthful. Over the past probably six months or so, the shallots that I've cut into when they're supposed to be really mild flavor and stuff, make your eyes water. So I think there's been like maybe sitting on trucks too long or um, something like that that is making them a little more potent. Not sure, but make your eyes water. All right, then we've got a quarter cup of white wine, the white wine vinegar. Add that. So if you think about it, you're getting like the, you know, you're getting the acid, you're getting the sweet, you're getting the kind of a little bit of the sour. So all those flavors, they always call it the umami. So it's like touches all the different parts of your tongue. And it's like, ooh, it's really, really good. Then we've got apple cider vinegar. There. And then we've got sliced almonds. So the sliced almonds, I'm going to actually wait. You could put them in the dressing and they, they hold up really well. These aren't the slice, these are actually like little slivers because I didn't have any of the slice last night, but um, they hold up in the dressing. So you could just keep them in there if you wanted to. And then they soak up the really nice flavor of the dressing. I'm just gonna add it on top of the salad. So a little switcheroos here every once in a while. So then stir it up. How do you turn off the camera? Mute. One second, we're gonna mute. Here we, here we go. All right. So that is the dressing. Okay, so I'll just add a few of the almonds, but I'm gonna add the rest of the salad. The dressing is, is like I said, it has a little bit of vinegar. It has sweet, um, but it's really good. Once you mix it in with all the lettuce and everything else and the and the pears that we're gonna add, um, it's gonna be really good. All right. Let's get the pasta. One thing fun about rigatoni, as I got a pasta bath there, or pasta steam bath, 
is it grows really big. So if you don't like pasta that's really big chunks and stuff, then change it up to something else. Change it up to a spaghetti, linguine, fettuccine, or, you know, all kinds of like the little, um, the other types of, you know, rigatoni, et cetera. I mean, there's little, you know, little types of things. So this one, so I shake it. Quite. Let me grab one with a spoon. So you can show. Quite a bigger size. Left the pasta water down there. So now I'm just gonna add the pasta. Then I'm gonna give it a quick stir. It smells so good. With all the, with the basil on there, the roasted red peppers. Looks great, thanks, Mona. I don't think I'm gonna add. Yeah, maybe I'll just add, maybe I'll add just a little bit of pasta water. Just a little. But that truthfully, it's at a really, really good consistency right now. Okay. Jerry just let the uh, barbarians at the gate, it's the two kids, the two, two pups wanted out, which usually they don't. So here is, doesn't that look good? It's filling all the little holes and crevices of all the, everything that's in there. That looks so good, it smells so good. So I'm just gonna leave this on here while I make the salad. Okay, dressing's off to the side here. Let me add in the pumpkin seeds really quick. Watch when you're roasting nuts because they don't they don't take very long, especially when you've got the oven pretty high. So get rid of that. We don't need all this stuff in here. We're gonna do a quick taste. Really good. It definitely has because of the red pepper flakes and stuff have some kick to it. But overall, it's, it's like a creamy tomato sauce. And then you have, then you get a little bite of the, I didn't do the mushrooms because I'm not a mushroom fan, but you get a bite of the little bit of chewiness and stuff of the eggplant. And then you get that fresh basil and everything else on it. Okay. Not gonna do too long. All right, so we've got everything ready to go. I think we've got everything on here that we need. Let's just check, make sure. Yep, looks good. All right. I'm gonna grab some bowls out so we can serve. Lucky Jerry, yeah, yeah, he's, he was like, he was like, well, you know, but we had lasagna over the weekend, so now I've got pasta again, and I'm like, really, are you going to complain? He's like, no, <laughs> not at all. All right, let me grab the. So, Jerry, I don't know if I can see on the. So those are the roasted, so that, like I said, the, the, the uh, pears and stuff are really, really soft. So you can see the roasting color around the sides and things, and it's got, you know, you can keep turning them and do a little bit more, but it's got more than enough of the roasting on it that I would like. And then I just have the pumpkin seeds over, which just did a little bit of roasting. So I'm gonna pull these, let these cool just a little bit. I'm gonna pull them off. But, you know, if you think about it with, um, you know, when you're doing the roasting and you've got the, the pears and everything else, you could actually make that the day before and then just put it right in the fridge. So you've got, these are things that you could, you could prepare and then eat the next day or forget about next day, just eat it. All right, so I'm gonna put in the, the almonds. If you don't like almonds, there's walnuts, pecans. Um, you could do pine nuts, which would be really good. So all the, the different flavors that you're looking for. And then I have 
red onion. So be careful on the red onion. The red onion is like the shallots right now. They're very strong. So just a little bit of red, the red onion goes a long way. And spread it around. We've got those for later. Okay. And then I've got the pumpkin seeds. So let me pull those over. If you've never really tried pumpkin seeds, when they're roasted, they are good. And they're one of the most, like when you're trying to buy different you know, like nuts to have on something, they're one of the less expensive ones too, which is really nice. And what I do with all my nuts, um, I keep them in the, and I'll just kind of pull that off to the side, but I keep them in the freezer. So when you buy them, it's, it's just keep them in the freezer. And then that way they keep fresher for a lot longer much, much longer than they do in the fridge. Right, before I add anything else, because I'm going to mix that up a little bit, but before I add anything else, you can see the red leaf lettuce, you've got the green, the green romaine, you've got the, the different nuts in there, and then you also have the red onion. So I am going to add I'm going to take a picture of it because it'll make it really pretty. Really full bowl. All right, then you've got your roasted pears. And if you try, they're so sweet. And they're so soft. Just pull them up and they've almost got like a caramelization on them. I'll add some, some other ones later. I'm going to grab just a few more almonds from the fridge just because it they disappeared when I moved them. Just kind of pull everything up so you can see it. There you go. All right. And then what we would do is we're going to add the dressing. I'm gonna add that at the end, but to taste it wise, so you've got the red leaf. It's very fresh. It's almost kind of like, it's almost kind of a little bit on the Asian side because it has, it has a little bit of those kind of flavors and stuff, but it's very, very light. So this is a really, really good one for, um, and I'll just kind of drizzle it in a little bit. Really good for a summer dressing, light, but healthy. So where did I get my white bowl? It's a great size and simple. Yeah, I like it too. This one I got at um, Bed Bath & Beyond. So I don't think, sometimes the stickers say on them, they're, it's called Everyday White. And I think it was like when I did it at Bed Bath & Beyond and I like it because of the shape, like a boat and stuff. When I got it there, I think it was, but this was probably six, seven years ago, but I know they carry the everyday white there. So great place and stuff to be able to get it. Yes, you could use the Prosecco white. Yeah, so Prosecco white vinegar um, for salad dressing. I have some, let me grab it. I have so many white vinegars, regular vinegars, flavored vinegars. This is the one that Mona's talking about. So the Prosecco white vinegar, it's really good. You know, a lot of people drink like Prosecco and stuff for, for their, um, I guess they imbibe in it for dinners and things like that. But this is a really good, good one too. So yeah, good suggestion. You could use all the different flavors. Okay, so let me pull this off to the side for right now. I've got my two, uh, two pups right around my feet, so I'd be careful. So there's the salad. So there's the roasted pepper or winter pear salad. So that one's ready. Now let's get the bowl.
they're both looking at me like they think it's well three people are looking at me in this house now like it's dinner time so not really hot on the side so one thing about induction burners gets the food hot gets it cooked really quick but not necessarily is your pan hot Good, quit beeping. And like I said, I didn't add a half a box, eight ounces. I did three quarters. So that's why you're going to see a lot more pasta. But knowing that Jerry will eat it, we're good. turn this off so we don't have to listen to that over me. All right, fresh basil. I have a little bit of scallions that I just chopped up. Always good to have greenery. Pop up a couple of leaves. That should be Pretty good. And then I'll leave the rest out because it probably will not end up in the freezer. Jerry's uh, loves the basil. A little bit of black pepper. Wrap my leaves up. Nice little chiffonade cut. And I'm going to leave these longer. Kids must think it smells good too, because like I said, they're under my feet. A couple more. Yes, you sure could freeze the pasta sauce. When you think about it, it'll probably be even better the second time around because you know, things, you know, like when you've got soups and things like that and they sit in the fridge and they're kind of marinating together. Really good. Okay, so that's that's for dinner. Oh, one last thing is the ricotta on top. All right. Guess what time it is. <laughs> As most people would say, hope day, but it's not home day, it's dinner time. So this is, so our pasta um, a la norma. So like I said, it's a little bit spicy, has eggplant, roasted eggplant in there, roasted um, mushrooms. And then it has lots of basil, has a little bit of spice to it because we put in the roasted red pepper flakes. I also put the ricotta in it. So it gives it a little bit more of the, Kind of like a vodka sauce where it's a little bit creamier. Um, you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to, if you just want to make it up, which is the, the marinara, it was just as good without the ricotta. And then just a little dollop of ricotta and of course basil and things on the top. So this is ready to go. Doesn't look good? Like a big bowl of pasta. That's Jerry, and as Mona would say, that's Jerry's bowl. What's left in here is my bowl. And then of course, I grab both. Then we have the, the pear salad. So the roasted pear salad. So there we go, there is dinner. So you've got the spicy, a little bit more of the sweet, which is great here. And voila, there we go, all ready for dinner, pasta, salad. And then of course we bought some uh, some Izzy bread, which is uh, used to be at Udi's, but he's got Izzy bread that he makes without all the oils. So we're gonna be toasting that up for a little bit and that is dinner. So hope you guys enjoyed, love you guys, talk to you soon. If you have any questions, always post them, Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at plantbasedkitchen.com. But we'll see you here in probably about two weeks. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.